All right, I am at the infamous Jack Rose Bar in DC, probably the best whiskey bar that there is in America, at their annual event, Premier Drams. Now, should you guys attend next year? Stay tuned to find out. If you're a whiskey fanatic and you have not been, if you're ever in DC, you must go to Jack Rose. Their selection is unbeatable. The first couple stations I stopped at were international whiskeys. I really wish I was able to try more of these. There were just too many bottles to choose from. And international whiskeys are just an area I need to expand my experiences in more. High Wire Distilling. Now this is actually from my good friend Taylor's neck of the woods down in Charleston, South Carolina. So Willet had by far the longest line. They had a couple of different purple top bourbons and green top rise. I was able to get a couple shots of the purple top bourbons, but one bottle in particular caught my eye. It was a 10 year purple top that was almost hazmat and man, it was good. This was by far my favorite station. They had three hitter bottles. First was the cider. Now this was the distillery only release and it was super sweet, great fall drink. The next was gingerbread, and this was probably my favorite pour of the night. I won a bottle of this instant. And the last one was their limited edition from last year. It was their cast strength, and it came in at hazmat proof. I just had to stop for you guys and show you the sheer collection that Jack Rose has. I just, I can't, I can't even put it into words just looking at all of it. Now it wasn't all open for drinking, but if you go during normal business hours, these are open to drink. I have to say though, when I look at the menu, I almost get decision paralysis. It is impossible to pick. If you guys would like me to do a more in-depth tour of Jack Rose, let me know in the comments. There is so much more to unpack than just this brief little bit I'm showing you guys. I know it's probably a little bit like playing the game Where's Waldo, but leave in the comments which of these bottles you would get a pour of at Jack Rose. If you're enjoying this content, hit that subscribe button, try to get to a thousand subs so we can do a live stream with you guys and just have a great time. Next, we went up to Jack Rose's patio. We lucked out. The weather today was absolutely fantastic.
Uh, now coming to the old Forester booth, I was able to try that Woodford batch proof, but unfortunately I was not there in time to try this Jack Daniels Dusty. I would have loved to try this bottle. They only had one of them and it went quick. I was able to try the Michter's Sour Mash Toasted. I actually really enjoyed it. I know this is getting some hate on YouTube, but I have to say I had by this point several drinks and I was getting palate fatigue. I really enjoyed both the Peerless Double Oat Bourbon and Rye and the next Peerless Bourbon I see, Double Oat, I'm going to buy. Here's a local distillery, District Made. It's in D.C. I'm excited to see how this really grows and the juice they put out as it gets older. Next, we went over to Imperial. This is their sister location where they also serve some drinks and have their bottle shop. One piece of footage I wasn't able to grab for you guys, they did do a blind tasting. They poured six different bottles out. They didn't tell you what they were, but you needed to put down what the bottle guess was. I'm sure I was all over the map. I didn't catch the final results, but I would be happy if I at least got one of them right. But I'm glad they offer that game for people. If you guys have it at home, next time you hang out with some friends, do blind tasting with each other. It makes you a little humble, but it's a good game to play. This was the Old Line Station. They're a distillery in Maryland. You always love to see local distilleries at these events. Bardstown always brings its eight games to these events. They brought two special releases here, the Bardstown 11, which hasn't come out yet. I tried it and I am 100% buying a bottle when it comes out. It was really good. They also had their Bardstown collection. This is a bottle you can normally only get in Kentucky and I was ecstatic to try. Green River also didn't disappoint. They brought their core lineup, their bourbon, and their wheat. In addition, they brought a bottle that was at Barrel Proof. I'm hoping some stores in my area start doing store picks of the Green River stuff because this was a great bottle. In addition, they brought some of their straight rye whiskey, which hasn't been released yet. Barrel was also a great booth to stop at. This is a tip for you guys when you go to these events. Make sure you talk to whoever's running the booth. Have a conversation with them. Let them know that you enjoy the bourbon, what you like about it, what you don't like. Just have a very genuine conversation. A lot of times, they'll have hidden bottles behind the shelf. There will be stuff that's not released yet or a very expensive bottle, and Barrel was the case. Behind the shelf here, he had their five-year age product, which hasn't been released yet, which was really good for a five-year age product. In addition, they had Seagrass Gold, which is a bottle I would have never bought, and I am so excited I was able to try it. Next, we went down to the lower level where they had their bottle shop. If you're ever interested to find out what Jack Rose has in stock, you can go to their website and look it up. They had their Russell Reserve Single Barrel. It's a little pricey at 125, so I ended up passing, but I love Russell Reserve Single Barrels. It was nice, Jack Rose had a lot of the store picks open so you could taste it before you bought it. So lastly, you have the basement of Imperial. It is a little dark down here guys, I'm sorry about the lighting. Some of the bottles may be a little hard to read.
Now here is the Four Roses booth. First off, I got to try the 135th anniversary bottle. I am sad I did not win the lottery on that bottle, but I might have to go out searching for it. It was one of the best pours of the day. I just have to pause this here for a second, let you guys just look at this. Being able to try this many Four Roses Ellie editions was amazing. Me and my friend were able to rank them. My top three were the 135th anniversary, the 130th, and then the 2022, but none of them were bad. Next was Blue Run. They brought some nice bottles too. I was able to try their age shaded product. That was really good. It's hard to justify it though for $200, but it was good. New Riff, they also brought some distillery only bottles or bottles that hadn't been released yet. In this high note, it was fantastic. Most of the juice is a little younger, but that one was amazing. And it makes me excited to try more of their products when they get older. So we'll try the Single Malt, hasn't been released yet, but Single Malt isn't really my jam. Found North also had a great booth. I've always been hesitant to buy these bottles because they're Canadian whiskey uh, and they're light whiskey, but this Found North 20 year, it hasn't been released yet, but it is a bottle I will buy when it comes out. I don't know what the price is on it, but it was fantastic. Now here was another great bottle to try. It is an Army Neck from 1989. I was born in 1990. It was wild to be able to try a bottle that was near my birth year. All right, I'm finally back home, so now it's time to recap the event. It was fantastic, and I cannot recommend going enough. It is a pr pricey, comes in at around $180, but for what you get, you just can't beat it. You get to try things that haven't been released yet, or just frankly outside your my my price range. Um, some of those bottles I just I could not justify buying, um, or for retail or secondary. Uh, like for example, like the Four Roses. I got to try all the Ellie's for the past couple years. That flight alone in either buying the bottles or even at a bar would just be ridiculous. Um, getting to try all the Bowman stuff. Uh, very limited. Like the cider that was employee only release. Uh, a will it has met uh, that's a bottle that just you're not gonna be able to find and if you do it, you're gonna have to pay an arm and a leg uh, there was just more bottles i can mention that i was able to try the only real downside to the event is that you have to try them all at once uh, about halfway through my palate was a little shot i could tell if it, you know if it was good or bad but uh, picking up on the small details became much more difficult i understand why when you go to do barrel picks uh, why you need to spit it out because if you don't and by the time you get the barrel pick 10 or so you're gonna be in trouble the other thing uh, it did get very very crowded uh, you probably can tell in a lot of the camera shots it was difficult for me to get up close to some of the bottles because there were just so many people surrounded each and every spot um, and then additionally the lines for some of the places got really really long but jack rose is a big facility they had both the jack rose facility plus their sister bar imperial open which did provide a decent floor plan for the event but at the end of the day if you live anywhere in the dc area it is a must attend event the tickets they normally sell out pretty fast uh, i got lucky enough uh, they did release a couple tickets the day before and i was able to snag one but next year, 100%, I'll be buying that thing earlier because I do not want to miss this event. And if you can, try and go next year. But before you leave, if you enjoy these type of videos, check out this one or this one. And until next time, cheers.